morning. We find ourselves on a very small Thames tributary, you know, somewhere I grew up as a kid fishing and I found it very enjoyable back in the days when I used to catch chub, roach, the very occasional barbel, lots of gudgeon, you know, but today we do find ourselves primarily here for chub. You know, today we're in the waders, so uh, we're hopefully going to be getting out and trotting a few swims. We're going to be looking to hopefully find shoals of chub. You know, it's pretty cold today. You know, air temp probably not got much above three degrees today. The water's slightly warmer, thankfully, so the fish should be definitely moving around. So to begin with, we headed up to uh, an area that I know actually in this, this time of year does tend to hold quite a few fish, mainly due to the warm water that comes through, but also the topography of the river. By and large, it's pretty shallow, so you tend to find that the chub will invariably gravitate to those areas that are slightly deeper. Now, if you are searching for fish, things like snags, trees, or depressions in the riverbed, definitely places you want to be heading. Coupled with the fact that you've got the warm water coming out from the overflow, you know, it's just the perfect storm for a chub holding area. And catching a few chub is exactly what we did. This one's going. Good hard fighting chub. In fantastic condition as well. Nice and plump on the chest. A little orange patch there, which quite a few of the chub actually here have. We're going to slip her back. There's nothing more you can hope for than actually catching on your first cast, but to, uh, to catch a few more uh, within a short period of time, you know, it always, it, it does give you that impetus to just keep going and keep going. And thankfully the swim did give up quite a few for us. two or three feet further and then should be in the take zone. Right. Any moment now. There we are. Oh, this one thinks it's a salmon. <laughs> That one really went for it. It's another lovely condition, Chub. You know, fighting fit. That's all you can hope for. And thank God the water's warmer than the air. Off you go. Go on. Excellent. There were times when uh, the bite started to uh, started to ease off, so with that low in action, it was time to move over onto another bait. So we moved over from the maggots and went over onto the bread. And thankfully, that changeover did then bring one or two more bites. Unfortunately, which is quite odd for the swim as well, it did ease off, by which point we, we did then move downstream, but that natural holding area for, for big chub, you know, deep water, warm water as well, especially this time of year when your air temp is as low as it is, you do expect to look for a little advantages like that. And if you can find somewhere that is producing 
slightly warmer water, whether it be going through an urban area, you know, um, whether it's an outfall like that from the sewage works. It's those little advantages that could be key in trying to find winter chub. Whilst we're roving around today, we'll be using the compact extension float rod. We'll be using a in unison with my Akuma Sheffield pin uh, loaded with 4.4 float fish line and also a 5AA Crystal Avon float. You know, I'll also have that bulk shotted with uh, a few, a few shot about halfway down the line. So depending on what sort of depth that we're fishing at, I'll have that probably set around about halfway and then about six or seven inches from the hook, I'll also be using a small number one dropper. Uh, hook of choice will depend on uh, what bait that we're actually using. So it'll either be a size 16 white gape uh, for a couple of white maggots, or it will be a size 10 or a size 12 super specialist, which I will be using with bread flake. So leading on from what I was saying earlier about having to uh, don the waders, well, there's a very good reason for that. Unfortunately, over the years, access has become even more difficult to this particular river. Um, also, where access was possible, where there wasn't any fencing, unfortunately now just been left to rack and ruin. You know, you've got Himalayan balsam everywhere, you've got um, briars, rose bushes everywhere, you've got loads and loads and loads of Japanese knotweed. You know, it just makes access very, very difficult in order to get to the river. So where you can get to it, putting on the waders just opens up so much more water for you. And there are other added benefits of that as well. You know, in terms of fish spotting can become uh, much easier, um, but also when you're trotting as well, you have a lot more control over trots. And say for example, if you, if you come through a little set of bushes and you manage to get yourself to the river, you really only have that little area available in order for you to fish. Whereas again, in the waders, it just totally opens up everything. Get that rod tip down. That's a good chub. That is not bad. Haven't seen all of it yet. It doesn't look like a bad fish. It's got a nice high back on it. That's a better fish. Well, after all that effort of wading around and that big lowing sport earlier today, it's nice to actually get another decent one on the bank. You know, this one's probably around about the four pound mark. Again, not massive, but uh, for a river of this sort of size, that's not a bad fish at all. And it's nice to see something like that. You know, in pretty good condition. It's uh, well and truly worth it. And again, waders open up this sort of sport. I think she's getting ready to kick. So uh, I'm gonna ease her into the river now and let her go. But it's uh, a lovely fish. Well worth the effort.